I'm a producer that doesn't rap, so I have to speak through the production of it, basically. It's not even like a lot of those beats, they don't start out like that in the beginning. Like a lot of them will just be like skeletons of stuff. Ideas, you know what I'm saying? Just to get the like idea going. Then an the artist might, they might do some ideas on it and I'll go back in and, you know, with it some more or have another producer come in on it with it some more or then do that and then have the artist go back in on it. In this clip from Metro Booming, we see one of the cornerstones of the modern process that's made the St. Louis born ATL molded producer into a modern day great, the consistent and persistent living of an age old proverb, step number one, patience is a virtue. A prodigy who crafted his first beat at just 13, Metro's grasp of the sonics that elevate the work of rappers to unforeseen heights is so acute that the Fader's 2016 piece, which labeled him the most trusted man in rap, has proven to be anything but an exaggeration. Future treats our ears like they're his, he told Forbes. We'll mix a whole album and he won't even hear it, but he knows we'll have it in the right place. A pioneer in the trap lane, Metro may have started with youthfulness on his side, but it didn't come with the impetuousness that's expected of teenagers. From the outset of his career as a beatmaker on Fruity Loops through to acquiring his most iconic placements, Metro has been fixated on producing the best work possible. As a result, he is mindful of the fact that quality work, let alone music which becomes beloved by the masses, can't be manufactured to a stringent timeline and sometimes a bit of back and forth can be pivotal to create a hit. Undaunted by the process of devoting hours, if not days, to a track, Metro garnered his unpeachable reputation as one of the game's finest producers through putting in the work to give his finest beats a distinct, iconic flavor that not only allowed him to convey what he wanted to say, but were the perfect, often person-specified templates for the artist to build off of. As a result, Metro didn't shy away from taking two years to create his latest project, Heroes and Villains, alongside an all-star cast of artists, and on the subject of the rappers that Metro has made into his closest co-conspirators over the years, this brings us to the next key step in Metro's rise to the upper echelons of the production world. Step number two, become synonymous with a movement. Going to Atlanta, right? What did that do to your sound? Like going over there and with the vibe there, you know? Well, through when I was younger, around that age, when I first started going to Atlanta, I was like, 15. I actually had like my 16th birthday out there too. So I mean, I feel like just I was I feel like I was already heavily influenced by a lot of shit going on down there. You know, I f a lot of music. You know, Gucci Mane. I always been with my favorite rappers from fifth grade. So 05 from back then, like Trap House, Black T, Icy, all that. Shit. So from back then, Gucci. I always been one of my favorite rappers. So many shit, tip Jesus. It was just so many. Shit. So so going down there and, and starting to fuck around. I started up. Don Cannon had reached out. You know, through somebody who used to manage me named Caveman, had reached out and was like, yo, I'm trying to f with you. So I started always coming down there. They had put me with Juice, man. I was just working, bro, just moving around, trying to make a name. Eventually, Juice had introduced me to Gucci. And then from there, it just, you know, it just kept going. And so that's establishing those type of relationships from 16 to now I'm 28. I just turned 28 last week. Yeah, bro, it was a blessing, you know, just to be around that and, and soak up all that game. You got to think, even at this time when I'm down there, like, Flocka coming out, he popped, yeah. he just came out, like, all that type of shit. So I'm watching from being down there so young until now, I done seen so many and watched them closely and watched all that, what they did right, what they did wrong and their mistakes. And, you know, I just apply that to how I move today. So I feel like it influenced my sound, but also the way I move, and, you know, handle myself and conduct business and like that. Although he was an outsider to the ATL, Metro's propensity to deliver some of the hardest trap beats imaginable meant that he was a seamless fit during the embryonic days of the scene that would go on to dominate hip hop in the 2010s decade. As he explained to Wallow and Gilly the Kid in the previous clip, his decision to consolidate his efforts on becoming an integral part of ATL's rap sphere not only meant that he got plenty of practice honing his craft, but also made connections that would further facilitate some of Metro's biggest hits. By keeping his ear to the ground and fraternizing with the legends that he grew up listening to, Metro services became a hot commodity and meant that no ATLian's career was complete 
without a beat from the Boomiverse headquarters. And over time, his position of being tapped into Atlanta meant that when new talents such as 21 Savage emerged, he was on hand to help guide them. Unsurprisingly, leaving an indelible imprint on One City Sound was a conscious decision on his part. I plan on making my mark on the legacy of hip hop, period, he told Forbes, but also in Atlanta production because there's a lot of history there. Now, if you yourself are an artist or producer who would like to create classics directly with artists in a seamless collaborative fashion the way Metro Boomin has been describing, be sure to pick up our free video course, The Top 20 Songwriting Secrets of Professional Rappers, where you'll get 20 free tips on how to make a full-time income from writing and producing rap songs songs directly from people who've done it by clicking the first link in the video description. With that said, let's hear Metro dive even deeper on how to go from local to global when thinking of how to leave your legacy in hip hop with step number three, serve the song. A lot of times when I make beats, it's just like how when I was in high school, like I'll just make them, just like making them. And uh, you know, a lot of times like while I'm making them, you might get an idea like, yo, it might sound real good on this. Or like when I'm in the mode for an actual album, it'll be like, okay, what do we need? What do, what are we lacking? What do we need more of? And I'll just more so go in on that, like more focused. But generally just making beats, I'll just make them and it'll be like, oh, this could be cool for, or I might be in the studio with somebody and just make something on the spot, just in the vibe, you know? In this excerpt from Metro's career spanning chat on Full Send, his message to budding producers is loud and clear. Don't overcomplicate the process. A lot of times, the presumption is that once the stakes are higher and more eyes are on you, it'll be wiser to deviate from what brought you to the dance. But here, we see that even as the platinum plaques mounted up, Metro still felt an innate kinship with the young man that started out with nothing more than a dream. For Metro, the keys to his success are the same as ever. Rather than forcing it, Metro simply let the beat happen organically. Don't shoehorn in features where they don't belong, nor collaborate with an artist simply based on prestige or their perceived buzz at the time. As at all times, Metro is aiming to add to his pedigree and leave something behind that he can be proud of. When constructing heroes and villains, he envisioned Don Tolliver portraying a role akin to what Nate Dogg did on Dr. Dre's landmark record, Chronic 2001. And while this may seem lofty, if not bordering on arrogance, if you don't think your art can be that impactful, then why should anyone else? Whatever you're making and whomever you're making it with, it's on you to make it memorable. And as Metro's next words of wisdom will illustrate, always, always follow step number four, do what's best for your beat. In the past, you know, there's been times where certain people have had a beat and then somebody else wants to put it out and wants to do this. Or, you know, sometimes like an artist, somebody will have a beat and I might not have heard what they did or they might not have really said anything about it. And then like, it comes out somewhere else. They're like, yo, I was going to use that. Was well, gotta let me know that. Because if you don't say anything, like you got to move. Because when I was younger, I used to, anytime I knew somebody rapped on a beat or even had it, I won't send it out to anybody else. But then like a song or something might never come of it. So then it's just, damn, I just wasted it. Yeah. And I did that for years. They say it's all fair in love and war. And as Metro illustrates, that undoubtedly applies to the music industry. A lesson learned that he unfortunately learned the hard way. Being too courteous can have a damaging effect on your own forward momentum. And in extreme circumstances could even lead to a beat being squandered entirely. Alongside your creative output, Metro's words speak to the need to be mindful of time management. There are occasions where a beat, which is always going to be somewhat indebted to the contemporary era of the time by its very nature, will only have so long of a shelf life. Even if you aren't chasing trends, things only have so much time. So it's important to strike while the iron is hot before the gleam comes off of it. As if Metro has had such a high success rate, the fact that tracks have simply collected dust logically means that there's untold plaques and classic tracks that have never seen the light of day. While he understands that there is a degree of momentum that's required, it should be noted that the world's most popular producer also doesn't approve of the concept of trying to pursue virality. Instead, he believes in letting the song engage with the public on its own terms. And when you consider how many hits he has, it's evident he's onto something. The kids, one thing I done learned, and I think I heard Pharrell say in the interview so long ago when I was younger, like the kids are always gonna sniff out the good shit. 
always, no matter what. So if you just focus on that and just bring in this shit, then, and TikTok is where the kids is at. So you put out a good album, it's just going crazy on there versus you trying to like cater and like kind of like fake, you know what I'm saying? Rather than trying to manufacture a hit, Metro sticks to his guns to create the music that he feels best represents his capabilities and what the genre could be. A key element of his philosophy, and this bleeds directly into our final teaching from the book of the Boomerverse, and that is step number five, don't settle. But even more so in the beginning, I'm gonna let you know what I think. And I feel like over the years, like the past decade, I've grown from more of a beat maker role into more of a like a real like producer role to where like giving you feedback, I might give you some bars, I might help you start this off, I might let you know, yo, this was hard, but it started, you started to lose me halfway through. Let's just fix that up and then keep it going. And I feel like that's like just as important, if not more important than like just making the beats, ensuring that the song comes out. You know, I can't just sit there in the studio and you just rapping on the beat and I might not like it like that. And I'm just like, just going with it. Just okay. Right, we'll go to the next one. No, like we got to try to make something out of it. Here, Metro refutes the notion that producers are only there to provide a backdrop for the artist to express themselves. For him and others like him, the concept of putting his name to a beat means that there's an onus of responsibility on the artist to live up to their standards of quality control. Even when you're starting out, having this sort of dialogue with the artist who will execute their own craft over your production can be hugely beneficial as if they hold up their end of the bargain and the track is a hit, it's only going to benefit you both. As touched upon earlier, production bleeds into your own self-expression, not just the rappers. As a result, don't be afraid to have your say and don't feel compelled to allow your beat to be used for anything that doesn't align with your own sensibilities. Ultimately, that will skew the perception of both your work and you as an artist. In Metro's eyes, this coaching aspect is vital to maximize the potential of his work, and it's an ethos that any producer or artist worth their soul will feel a strong connection to. As he made clear in a recent interview with GQ, Metro feels a sense of obligation to create the best music he can. As the ambassador representative of what's going on, I look at it like a real responsibility he declared. No matter what degree of acclaim you have, you should always approach your work as though it may one day be looked at as a sacred document of the game. For if it worked for Metro and enabled him to make hit after hit, then it's certainly good enough for you. Now I want to see you in the comments. What do you think Metro Boomin's most classic beat is? And of course, if you're an artist or a producer yourself, be sure to visit the video description for that free video course. I've been your host, Drew Morrissey, the big homie Drew for How to Rap, and I'll see you on the next one.